Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. Today I'm gonna to get into, I don't know, a little bit of a controversial topic, but really as we go on, I think you're gonna find out it's not as controversial, at least my view on it, and that is wild caught versus farm versus captive bred and all that other stuff. And really, it's kind of a big part of what's happened in the reptile trade over the last, like, you know, 30, 35 years or whatever as we've expanded. And really, you don't think about ball pythons and the fact that they used to all be wild caught. And then the farming changed the entire reptile industry. And what I mean by that is that back in the day when I was first getting into reptiles, the only real ball pythons available were wild caught adult normal ball pythons. Now this is a captive bred one, but it is a normal ball python. And the fact was is that those animals came in cheap, they were widely readily available, and 98% of them didn't survive because they wouldn't eat and they were really just really terrible animals, meaning that ball pythons as a whole were kind of considered garbage animals. But then everything kind of changed when a guy named Joe Fossey down in Tampa, Florida was going to the University of Florida or Florida State, one of those two, I don't really know, and he was going to school with a guy from Africa over in Ghana named Emmanuel Noah. Well, they both kind of liked reptiles and believe it or not, Ghana was kind of a hot spot for ball pythons. So together they decided Decided with the fact that these wild caught adults typically didn't do well, what would happen if they collected wild caught females that were gravid and actually let them have their eggs and hatched them and then sent them over to the United States? Now, weirdly enough, years later, Joe Fossey was the person that brought in the first albino ball python, but I don't want to jump ahead of myself. The truth was, they were just hatching normal captive ball pythons. The first time they were really farmed over in Africa, and guess what? They did absolutely amazing in captivity. They were no longer those garbage animals that wouldn't eat and do well. They thrived in captivity. And that first early farming of ball pythons is really what paved the way for all the farming of reptiles that happens now. from Hawaii. I'm here with the white whale, you know, they call you the English enforcer. That's right, that English I like enforcer, that. I really you know, like that. Because you got them guns. Anyways, Shot you know, I'm ears. back from Hawaii. Can you guys notice? I got a little tan on me. You Kill the wakaliki. I, mean. I know you want to lay me. Dude, you, you know, know I mean? that. Yeah. You know that. Dude, they say that right when you land. Oh, I didn't know that. They no lay way. you up. And did they, they, did they uh, put the thing on you? Oh, yeah. I had like, like 30 the of them. You know, I'm a movie star, so there was a lot of people waiting for me. What can I say? I'm popular. Um. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One question though: Is it true the coconut bikini things are? Do they have? Bro, those? is it true? Yeah. Bro, I didn't see a single woman not wearing one of them. Dang, man! I knew it. I gotta go one day. I knew Dude, it. And the best part too is that they wear these grass skirts, right? No way. I'm a smoker. I gotta be careful. I'll go right up in flames. Watch out. Ooh, you're on fire. Ooh. Dude, did you go to the King's Hawaiian Roll factory? I don't think that's actually in Hawaii. Oh, okay. That's, you know what? Yeah. I'm not going. They got the dole I'm plant, though. They got a bunch of pineapples. Man, that's cool. Yeah, it was cool, you know. A lot of beaches. Well, anyway, be back, I'm back and, uh, you know, better than ever. Um, just getting that cheddar, you know what I mean? I guess. Jurassic Park 3 on the way. We're directing it. Thank you guys for staying tuned. Peace out. And back to Honey the Piebald Ball Python. What I mean is that although that early days of farming ball pythons really changed the entire reptile hobby because really a cornerstone of any pet snake seems to be a ball python. And if they weren't farmed by Joe Fossey and Emmanuel Noah, maybe the reptile hobby wouldn't be what it is today. But that being said, as people reproduce them because of color mutations and so on like that, it kind of took the pressure off of the wild caught animals. And over in West Africa, they were farming about 100 to 120,000 a year. And I don't know that that was a sustainable thing to take that many animals out of the wild, have them lay their eggs, and sure, they were releasing some of the babies back, but probably not as much. I know some people over in West Africa that were trappers that were literally collecting 40 or 50,000 eggs a year at one point in the same areas they were hard to get 8 or 10,000 eggs. So my point is, is that was definitely affecting the wild. And what happened is as we were reproducing them in captivity, even though the farmed animals were far cheaper we were producing normal ball pythons as a 
byproduct of some of the mutations. Now there doesn't seem to be the high demand in West Africa, and instead of importing 100, 120,000, they're only importing 20 or 30,000 a year, which is a great thing both for the hobby and for the ecology of ball pythons. Guys, I am so excited. It's been a while since we've had a merch drop, and guess what? We have this merch right here that's dropped. We actually have a whole bunch of different things, but this is really cool. Of course, Ben and Jerry and uh, Ben and Jerry's mice stream. Uh, let's go ahead and put this on. That's right, this is absolutely incredible. So excited about the merch, but it's only gonna be available for the next couple weeks. But hey, listen, we've got different colors of this one and some other ones too, like this one. Look, this absolutely cool blue color right here. But we have a whole bunch of different merch drops. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and see if the crew uh, will wear them because usually they're a little bit defiant about this, but I think I'm just gonna make them wear it. Hey, Bruce. Whoa, this is sweet. Have another uh, white double trouble. I'd like Eric to try it on, but I only have a large. Maybe it'll work. Here. Yo. Oh. oh, that's pretty awesome. It fits pretty good. Hey, no, check it out, man. You've got some new merch. Dude, this is awesome. What if it was purple? Oh, or red. Whoa, is there any other merch? Well, it's funny you say that. There actually is one more of these guys. Oh my god, this is awesome! That's right, we have a bunch of Ben and Jerry as well as Bad Choice Noah merch. And hey, you know, winter is coming, or fall that is, and you might need a hoodie. We've got this really cool hoodie here. You can see it's got the emblem there. We've got double trouble on the back. The sleeves actually have Ben and Jerry all the way over like this. I mean, this thing is absolutely dope! And I tell you what, it is absolutely comfy, super soft and warm. But you know what? Uh, it's not just Ben and Jerry. That's right, we actually have the Bad Choice Noah hoodies as well. All of these designs you can go ahead and check it out. Link in the description or barcheckboys.com. You can buy yours. But unfortunately, these are only available for two weeks. So you only have two weeks to cop your merch. Let me know in the comments if you guys are going to be getting yours. And uh, I hope you'll buy some. Although I don't really want to get into a debate about wild caught versus captive farm or anything like that. Because i got mixed emotions on it. you got to remember, the majority of the animals that have come into the country that are now being bred... And We'll talk about that a little later in the vlog. Uh, we're wild caught animals and then they were captive bred. So if we don't bring wild caught animals in, it's kind of hard for the species to be propagated. But if we really rely on wild caught animals as a primary source, it's not really good for the ecology or even future conservation of those animals. The fact is, look at Calabar burrowing pythons, for instance. An absolutely amazing animal. By the way, this is a captive farmed animal over in West Africa. And the vast majority of these guys come in wild caught adults. And they don't really do that well in captivity activity quite frankly but the problem is is the adults and even when the babies do come in which is not very frequently they're dirt cheap I mean they come in for like 15 20 bucks so the fact that these guys have three eggs it's a little bit difficult to really justify like I'm gonna set up a big breeding colony to produce a bunch of animals that I can compete with animals that come out of the wild for $15 and therein lies the issue and I totally get the fact that you've got to kind of make it worthwhile breeding stuff right I mean you know it costs money to keep these animals and to reproduce and oftentimes you've got to think about will it be financially worth it but the truth is if we don't work with animals that maybe aren't financially worth it uh, what is that really going to do to the wild population so I think it's our responsibility as a community to kind of work with animals that are a little bit cheap coming out of the wild and uh, still reproduce them take for instance Jackson's chameleons these guys still come in even from Hawaii very cheap so a lot of people don't breed Jackson's chameleons I mean there are some people that do but maybe that's a species that we should work harder at reproducing and maybe there should be an extra value for the fact that they're U.S. captive born in the continental United States, if you know what I mean. And it's all kinds of reptiles. I mean, things that aren't necessarily financially worth it, but I think it's our responsibility to still try to breed them. So it takes off some of the pressure of the wild animals, right? Now, I think farming animals can work out in some cases. It certainly worked out in ball pythons. It's worked out with blood pythons and a bunch of other species. But, you know, still, I think it's our responsibility to try to produce them here in the United States. So we're about getting ready to finish up the breeding season. I really only have about maybe a handful of clutches that I'm still waiting on. Most people might think that the breeding season is the most important part of the year, but actually the important stuff starts right now because now we can start preparing for next season. What we do now will directly affect how well we do next year. And we've already had a pretty good season this year, so I think next year will be even better. <music> Although 
I really don't personally like to keep wild caught animals, although I do work with some captive bred farmed animals. The truth is, is that I'm not totally against that trade as long as it's done responsibly. Let's look at crested geckos as a perfect example. For those of you guys know, these guys come from New Caledonia, and there was a period of time that yes, they were being collected for the pet trade, and it may have actually helped decline the population, but the majority of the population decline came from deforestation and just kind of overdeveloping property. And there was a period of time where they thought that maybe crested geckos were extinct in the wild. If those wild caught animals hadn't been imported and wildly produced here in captivity, both in Europe and in America, the fact is, is that these guys might have been wiped off the planet. And it's certainly a weird example where importing animals actually kind of saved the species. Think about it, you can go into almost any reptile shop in America and probably all over Europe and who knows, maybe in South Africa and find crested geckos. Whereas for a period of time, they thought they were actually extinct in the wild. How weird is that? You could walk into PetSmart and buy one for 50 bucks or whatever, but you couldn't find them in the wild. Now they've kind of reestablished some populations over in New Caledonia because they found some on some insular islands. But the fact is, is that without those wild caught animals coming in, sure, maybe the population wouldn't have been as stressed with the importation of animals into the pet trade. But the fact is with deforestation, they may have actually went extinct. And without that backup plan of captive breeding, hmm, who knows what would have happened. So there's benefits to bringing in animals too, but it's kind of a tricky subject and I'm not trying to fall on either side of it. Again, in my opinion, I really do prefer either responsibly farmed animals or captive bred animals. Another example is kind of like the Chilean rosehair tarantulas. Lots of people are breeding tarantulas, but it's really difficult to really breed animals that come in imported really cheap, right? So it's difficult to kind of take the cage space up, the time and everything else to produce an animal that is coming in. So oftentimes the wild cuts are kind of more popular because they're cheaper than the efforts that are put into captive bred. Now listen, I'm not trying to pass judgment on anyone and I certainly don't want to do that. And my thoughts are that there'll probably be 10 videos that are rebutting almost everything I say. I'm not trying to say that anyone's doing it right or wrong. I'm just trying to say that sometimes myself included need to take a look and start working with some animals that maybe aren't even as financially worth working with but are really cool and could use our help for captive bred animals. Take for instance like Asian vine snakes. I mean they come in relatively cheap and are super awesome animal and oftentimes they do relatively good in captivity but you hardly ever see babies that are captive born. If we could just put some effort into more animals like that I think it's a good thing for the animals, it's a good thing for the hobby and it's overall just what we should be doing. I'm looking at all kinds of species that I want to work with. One of the ones I'm definitely going to start dedicating myself to are viper boas. I just think they're absolutely incredible and right now very few people are captive breeding viper boas. There's quite a few of them coming from the wild every year and some even come and grab it and have babies. Not a lot but regardless I'm growing a group of animals that are actually from females that came in from the wild that actually had babies. So these are captive born, although they came from wild caught females. And I'm growing up a nice group and I am just committed to try to breed these guys. Now, will it be financially worth it? I have no idea because they come out of the wild relatively inexpensively, but I just think they're amazing. And I want to work with even more animals like these guys for sure. And we got a lot of stuff coming over here, leaving, shipping out every day. So it's really important that we stay really organized. So today I'm just going through and marking all these babies. So they all have their own tub and their number and we can ship them out easily. a million examples of like animals that are either farmed or that come in that are really cheap compared to captive bred. Take for instance like Asian water monitors. They do still come in but people are breeding because there's mutations that make it worth breeding and have some offshoots like Elvis for instance was actually an offshoot in an albino breeding so it's a possible head albino making it worthwhile and those captive animals are so much just more tame and docile and uh, if I'm speaking about monitor lizards, Nile monitors would be the same way. Of course I have chicken strip here. Uh, let me see if I can get this little monkey. Uh, it's all an adventure and hopefully I won't get bit. A few moments later. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's okay, bud. It's okay. Ow! Ow, 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 ow. Okay, yep, yep, ow, ow. Okay, chicken strip. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, chicken strip. It's okay. It's okay, bud. It's okay. It's okay. Whoa, it's okay. Okay, it's okay. Ow, 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 ow. It's alright. It's alright. Yeah, he's a, he's a feisty little monkey and we definitely have to work with him a little bit more. Ow! Okay, okay, okay. No more, no more. Don't bite. Ow, ow. Okay, okay. Ow! Okay, chicken strip, stop. Okay, 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 okay. We're calming down, buddy. Okay, we're good. All right, okay. Woo! It's a little bit of a, a challenge to work with him, as you guys can see. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Okay, he's not getting any better. He's actually getting a little bit more uh, cantankerous, to be sure. 
But the point is that Nile monitors come into the country for literally dirt cheap. And they're really amazing animals, absolutely beautiful, yet they really should be captive bred because I think that after two or three generations of us captive breeding these guys, they're gonna calm down and they won't have the same attitude that Chicken Strip has right here. Whew, I tell you what, this little monkey, I've been handling him in about a week or so and he changed his attitude a lot. Whoa, tell you what buddy, you gave me a run for my money. So now I think I'm gonna hold him just a little bit, get him habituated because uh, I tell you what, He's got quite a little bite on him, for sure. Woo! <laughs> and like I said, oftentimes like green anacondas and, and again, water monitors, after you get two, three generations of captive bred, they turn out to be extremely docile compared to the wild animals. This was a wild hatch baby right here. You can see his attitude is just absolutely incredible. It's really difficult for people to want to take the time, the room, and the energy to breed a normal Nile monitor just because the babies come in so cheap. Regardless, he is still an absolutely gorgeous animal, but uh, I tell you what, I think he won the battle today, guys. So there it is, guys. Let me know in the comments what you feel about this controversial subject that I kind of broached today. And like I said, I'm expecting there to be other videos with my name in it saying that I'm wrong about everything I think. Again, I'm not saying who's right, wrong, or anything. I just am saying that we should probably put as much energy into those kind of really crazy, obscure animals that come in wild caught and produce some of those things because they're absolutely incredible. And who knows, you know, look at, there are some species of snakes that are really cheap out of the wild, but if you have to produce them, they're really expensive like mangrove snakes for instance so it can still be financially beneficial if you want to look at it that way but I'm just thinking about the fact of kind of taking off that pressure from wild uh, let me know your thoughts and let's just end it there if you guys don't mind have an absolutely wonderful day I do love your beautiful faces be kind to someone I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow